very welcome um, to all of us to this Q&A session um, about the question, why to join an accelerator incubator. Um, I'm Constanze from Hubraum and uh, I'm your moderator for the next um, three minutes, uh, 30 minutes, three minutes, 30 minutes. And um, we've just had, uh, as I just said, our panel discussion on this topic um, on the main stage. Um, and I hope many of you, of the participants, which I see ne, at the right, ne, in the list, um, have the opportunity um, to join. Um, but now we would like to give um, our audience, our dear um, Startup Night um, participants at the stage and hear and answer your questions. Um, feel free to post your questions in the chat, uh, which you find at the top right. Um, and I will read it out. And you're also welcome um, to ask your question in person. And therefore, there's a button at the top right. I think it, it calls ask for audio video participation, something like that. Push it, please, and then I can activate you. And but please be aware, um, this session will be recorded. You see it at the red point at the um, at the top. Um, and it will be available on demand um, um, later on. First of all, I would like to introduce our four experts here in front of me. Um, with Tim and Tobias, we have an incubator and an accelerator in our round. And we have also two startups with Mike and with Fabian, who are happy to, um, to share their experience with you. And guys, please um, introduce yourself, please very briefly and the from left to right. Um, Mike, you are the first, please. All right, so my name is Mike, and I'm one of the co-founders of Rodia, former Blitzer. Um, I think uh, Tobias just mentioned us, so thank you very much for that on, on the stage. So what we are doing, we're basically building, um, let's say, traffic sensors and like, like let's say, cost-efficient speed cameras for police and communities. Uh, so um, yeah, we, we're part of the Reactor Berlin program, which was really, really good and really successful for us. Our story was a little bit crazy because I was back in Colombia when we actually applied for it. And I had to participate in the selection day, basically as a thing made out of uh, paper wood. But yeah, like more of the story uh, later on. I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm open to any questions concerning the program. Yeah, cool. And um, the participants, um, feel free to um, fill the chat with your uh, with the questions in the meantime, please. And now Tim is at the next. Hi, <clears throat> hi. Yes, awesome. Uh, nice to meet you all, and also hello, hi to the audience. I'm Tim. I'm located here in Berlin, working for Hubraum as a program manager. Um, done a lot of very interesting projects in the past from the factory prototyping program to an edge computing program. Um, to a mixed reality program with the partner Enreal, Qualcomm, and Unity in the last year until this year. And today we have a very nice program also running in the area of iOS, uh, also with a dedicated tech support by Apple. So there's a lot of things that we can do as an incubator as Deutsche, from Deutsche Telekom. And we have, as one of our startup participants and guests here, also a um, yeah, startup um, that participated in the mixed reality program with Enreal, Mixed World. Maybe we can go that direction if this is okay for the moderation. Good, yeah, of course, of course. The next one is Tobias. Um, yeah, he's already was... on stage, but now here in our rows. Now, to, so, so basically, I was introduced already on stage. What I'm currently doing yeah. the reactor program, but but I've been around for for nine years. Also, very close ties with um, started bootcamp, started bootcamp health, started bootcamp mobility energy. We did several corporates. So I, I was basically running and owning the Raymaking Loft slash the place. So a physical startup space where we like at any given time had some kind of acceleration program. Perfect. And the last one, Fabian. Thank you so much. Right. Yes, perfect. Hi, my name is Fabian from Mixed World. Um, so we are one startup that uh, Tim just mentioned who uh, participated last year in the um, Hubraum. Um, mixed reality program with Enreal, Enreal being one of the more uh, promising commercially available mixed reality glasses which you connect to a phone. Mixed World is working in the field of mixed reality. Um, we have a vari variety of projects. Um, one is facing um, in the direction of consumers where we make uh, 3D maps available for, for everyone to look at through mixed reality glasses. Uh, we also do projects for 
uh, enterprise businesses uh, a little bit more in the maintenance, uh, maintenance uh, sector where we try to connect experts using mixed reality glasses in difficult situations so they can get help from the back office to the field. Super. And now back to Constanza. We are complete. Okay. Um, I haven't seen any questions in the chat. Please feel free to, to fill it or, um, yeah. No, give me a sign that we would like to, to activate your audio or your video. If there's no questions have found the chat, I would ask you, um, Tobias and Tim, um, for the first question, what are the, our programs or your programs? What they look like? What do you offer to, to startups? Um, in no, addition to Tim. what we, okay, sorry, Tim was just muted. So do you want to okay. go first, Tim? I can go first as well. Um, yeah. By the way, your video kind of dropped, I think, uh, Tobias. I'm not sure what's happening there, but or is it maybe just on my hand? Um, but uh, I think there were already in the in the panel that you guys uh, presented um, a couple of major criteria, what the programs are about and how they run. Um, so let's let's add maybe a little bit of more content uh, to what was already said in the main stage. So usually when we run programs, it's uh, always um, internally sponsored also by stakeholders of Deutsche Telekom. Axel mentioned um, that they are mainly vertical programs that we do, which is true in the sense of us thinking on what are, for example, um, strategic areas where the collaboration with startups and Deutsche Telekom would actually make sense and where it fits. But that is not that much of a vertical. It's not that narrow, actually, as it sounds, because it can be quite broadly as well, such as the topic of 5G. 5G is a technology piece which will enable many different areas, for example, and those areas can be looked at horizontally as well. So there is gaming, but there's also automobile and mobility cases. There's also the cases of um, gaming and VR, AR, et cetera, around it, but as well, any kind of technology enabling use cases on top of it as well. So many different things as well, going to drones and, and, and so forth, um, uh, where we participated uh, or where we looked for um, uh, partners or startups globally. And that's the one criteria which is very important as well. So whatever we do, we usually do that on a global scale. So we look for companies, even if they are located in somewhere in Asia to somewhere in the US and anywhere in Europe, it can be anywhere. And we have a very dedicated, very sharp scouting mechanism behind it with an entire team behind that that does it. Um, and overall, looking at Hubraum as an entity um, and as a brand, we are part of Deutsche Telekom's group partnering department, especially looking to early stage companies with the leaning to a more mature kind of stage already. And overall, with all of that together, having an own investment fund plus programs running plus stakeholders supporting the activities, um, that's, uh, I think, a very promising and great proposition to the market. And uh, lastly, and I think very beneficially on top of all of that is that we do that often as well with external partners, such as, uh, in, yeah, like I mentioned, Unreal, for example, or Unity and Qualcomm. We had a program with Microsoft in the past and so on. I think there's a lot of things that we can um, add as a value for developers. And uh, yeah, maybe to you, um, Tobias, with adding some comments from your end. No, I mean, I mean the, the great thing, Tim, is that we are not competing. <laughs> um, so, so basically all the things that you mentioned, we cannot provide. So, so, but, but we are basically pretty much industry agnostic, very early stage startups. There's a couple of industries where we don't really know how to help. That would be food and beverage, that would be gaming, that, that, would, be, um, that would be also definitely like nightlife and, and things like that. So it's the but also we're not extremely good in hardware. So, so we don't have a hardware lab and that's always helpful if you have some, some tinkering to a few support hardware startups. Exceptions, of course, are proving the rule. And how do we help Constancy, you asked. So, so it's, it's in the end, it's, it's kind of, um, there's also content program um, that's where over the half year that the program lasts, you get, you get workshops on marketing, on business development, on legal, on finance, on IP protection, and, and all this module that basically for two weeks or three weeks, you basically get one step after the other, which is 
pretty similar um, content-wise to all the all the other very early stage programs. So, so you're part of a program and not, then nothing happens to you. It's, it's literally we have lectures where we teach people certain topics, but but we try to to always embed our mentorship into into the specific topics. So so it, it doesn't become as dry and university feeling. It, it's basically it should, it should be hands on what specifically um, we need. And, and I think Mike can actually tell you more about his experience from from the startup side on that topic. Yes. So to add on to that, I, I think as a startup, what I think was most valuable to us was like the big, big kind of network that we got from that. So like the, the network of Reactor Berlin was, was really great, both in terms of like meeting potential investors or like just mentors for particular topics or even like to use the mentors investors during the process of raising just to ask, hey, you know, how does, I don't know, like a convertible work, what's important is like, I don't know, it's important, am I diluted 10%, 20%. So, so basically, if you ask me, I think the biggest value provides the really, really big network that we actually gave to us. And I also talked to other people from other programs. And I think uh, the, this kind of business agnostic approach with the network is really focused more on the whole startup community rather than a particular vertical is really helpful because as a startup, you yourself mostly know things about the vertical because I don't know, you, you heard something about the business, you come from that. But the whole other part, which to be as mentioned before, 90% of what startups do is like similar besides basically its product and this kind of mentorship Reactor really provided to us. Um, Fabian, you were part of a Hubraum program. You would you like to add something? Yes. What? Yeah, cool. Please. So um, I think the most the most benefit that we um, that we also got from from Hubraum, besides also the big network and um, uh, the mentorship that we got um, on on a variety of fields, um, was also access direct access to um, to hardware that was not very well available on the market yet in in a very early stage, so that we could start. Um, develop out our ideas on that specific platform and kind of get a head start before everyone else uh, to see if, if, if we can do something useful and valuable with that hardware and also get to know the ecosystem of that hardware and get direct access to uh, the actual hardware vendor. And because of the, uh, let's say, big names that, uh, that also participated in that program, we also could talk to, uh, to Qualcomm directly and uh, also to Unity, who actually uh, gave a very, very precise mentorship on the progress of our application and gave us early feedback on the ideas that we had so that we can evaluate and build in the feedback into uh, continuing developing uh, the software or even change direction in the middle of the program. That was super awesome. And that's why I can only recommend also applying at pitching. Okay, can I ask a question, Constanze? Because <laughs> sure. it is on, on, on stage, it's basically Iris and myself, it's, it's clear our programs are equity free, no no strings attached. Why does Telecom do that? Or are there any strings attached on, in the Hubram program? Well, same, same for us. Okay, so you only invest later on and of course for the investment you get shares. The investments from Hubram side for teams is uh, not mandatory or it's not automatically a part okay. of the program. So it's a little bit of a different stream and uh, there are some different, let's say, decision making processes there. But for a program, it's usually not uh, monetized and we don't take in any way any equity in there. So if, for example, Fabian and Mixworld participate in the program, it's very similar to how you guys also organize it. Yeah, no, because in the end, we were talking like, like years ago, there were many programs out there that took mandatory equity share. Uh, they're all dead. So, so, so is that do, do is that this the general idea that basically any equity taking program does not have a chance on the market because the startups don't need that kind of thing anymore? I think or I don't want it. <laughs> Oh, Sorry to, yeah. to jump in <laughs> so, from so a startup think, perspective. You, you can actually uh, talk about that very well, I think. But uh, when we scout and talk to hundreds of different teams over the years, it's a very common uh, feedback that the moment we would ask for equity for participating, for example, in a cohort or a program, I think the teams would be out. And it doesn't make sense. So 
it completely doesn't make sense uh, to take something as a corporate from a let's say young founding team instead of actually thinking on how can we support them and be a service to them by winning together because this is how the success is much higher rated than actually taking something and still um, we, we are Deutsche Telekom it doesn't make sense if we you know take from smaller companies in, in, in that stage uh, and it's the other way around. It's all about thinking, is the use case interesting? Can we bring that towards customers? Can we bring some value on top of it? And can we em empower that even with money from our side, uh, but not how can we take what's in theirs to make it ours? It's I fully, wrong absolutely fully, yeah. no, no, fully, fully agreed. It's just that if you take the other side of that coin, it means that if you are a program where you take equity stake, then you only get the second best startups. Yeah. I, I I could maybe add something <laughs> to that. Um, so like, it seems like Berlin is really spe special in this because like from what e Reactor offers or like other programs with the Berlin Startup Stipendium, I think it's like one of the few programs that I found in Germany, even maybe in the whole of Europe, who actually give you money that you can focus in your startup. So I think it's a great initiative that was started, I know, by the Senate of Berlin or who came up with this idea but that makes Berlin really a special place because in Munich, I think there are only, let's say programs where they take your equity. And there's, I think only one programs that give you a little bit of amount of money, but only if you come from the T of Munich. So I would say then the, the ecosystem is very much closed up. And in Berlin, it's much more open towards like anything. And I think the, the opportunity to actually get like paid for six months to work on your idea is really good compared to what you can get, like basically anywhere else, I would say in Europe. Okay, I've heard a lot of really valuable answers for the questions, why join the Accelerator Incubator? We have the first question in our chat and for all um, the guys who will, or who have joined us a little bit later, please um, fill in your questions in the chat or ask for um, audio video participation and then you can ask it also personally but now i would like to to read the first question from from john um do the experts think there's any there's any appetite in the berlin ecosystem for accelerators incubators which don't focus on scalable products or global potential and perhaps focus more on local social impact etc who would lot, who would like to take the question so the, the first part of the question is interesting. Uh, we're thinking about, would there be anyone interested in not uh, having a scalable use case, but uh, focusing it actually on the regional or social level, that's a very hard question. I, 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 would, I wouldn't know any of, of that uh, focus, but if, the, if you cut the question in half and only look at the first part of the question and think about, would there be anyone interested also in working with companies, even if they are not, let's say, scalable on a broader level, then uh, it's a clear maybe. Because uh, the the answer actually there is, is there something else in it? So if it's not about the scaling part, but if it's something where it's interesting from a technology piece to understand how the, let's say, requirements for the infrastructure would look like, or what kind of um, technology pieces uh, they would need for their use case to enhance it or make the user experience better where it's uh, early stage technology and infrastructure which is not yet maybe broadly available for commercial use then it's not at the forefront a question of how to commercialize it and scale it up then it's more about learning the technology and infrastructure of, of that piece and there's a clear yes so there are definitely use cases where we for sure would look at and work with and participate with and bring mentorship in and etc um but then it's more about the learning and, and understanding and having due diligence on specific use cases and technology pieces and infrastructure, not, not that much of the scaling up. But if you think about the local focus of social, regional, then maybe more in, maybe in like, like sustainability e-commerce areas, it could be something. I mean, we, we have the different perspective on that because you come from the technology part, we come from Yes, we also want to save the world, but, but I will not support a startup that, that cleans, cleans the ocean out outside of Hamburg. If, if somebody has the idea to clean the ocean, it needs to be scaled so it cleans all oceans worldwide. So, so in the end, it's, it's basically what, what we do, we, we all do the whole ecosystem. We use technology to, to solve problems, ideally at a global scale. 
If we would solve the problems on the local scale, on a one-time problem on a local scale, we would waste our resources and, be, and behave irresponsible in, in that sense, because we basically have limited resources. And if you can do something good worldwide, we would rather do that than, than do something good in a very local limited um, level. Okay, John, I hope your question is answered now. Please give me a hint, if not. Cool. Then I would like to have a deeper look on the application phase. Um, um, probably first to um, to one of our startups. Um, how did your application happen? Why did you apply? Yeah, maybe I can I can start. Um, so we've been we've been looking into new um, technology and new um, ways to develop solutions for for mixed reality for quite some time even before the program started and as soon as we found out about that um, uh, Deutsche Telekom, Hubraum and all the partners are actually doing that program it was like the perfect fit for what we were already um, exploring it was like boom hit all check boxes for like this is the, the the definite way to go. It was so good um, uh, formulated and also uh, gave us the opportunity to to get into it that immediately we said, yes, we need to apply to this program and come up with a very uh, good and interesting story so uh, that we will win the pitch uh, kind of and be part of it. Yeah, so uh, this is how we got into it. And then how the, uh, the, the, the process runs, prepare very carefully a presentation of, of what you're planning to do. Then uh, after the pre-selection phase, um, which is really exciting, you get um, an invitation to a live presentation. Um, and this is something which is also one of the tips I want to give to other startups. You have to make sure because there's so many applications that you kind of stand out from the rest by just adding that little bit of extra spice <laughs> to your presentation and what we did back then and i think you remember tim uh, we actually did um, a presentation not only as a powerpoint slide but we uh, took the opportunity to showcase a prototype that we already built in mixed reality and live demoed this and brought everyone in with us it was kind of a mixed reality uh, pitch inside of mixed reality over a traditional video platform and i think that was really uh, something to remember. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's can that's I, how I can say it. Yeah, can I quickly add that until today there are still colleagues talking about the application from uh, from Mixed World because it actually really happened the way that they presented in Mixed Reality in a kind of augmented way to the audience uh, a project they want to do in Mixed Reality, which no one else did. Everybody else is just, you know, creating PowerPoint, sharing their screen and walking through what they want to do and who they are. But those guys, they did it completely the other way. They took us actually into a new sphere. And that's why um, already the presentation was astonishing and great. But uh, there are more pieces to that than only this. Yes. So to continue for us, it was, um, yeah, we we just said, okay, uh, we know we need like some money to build this product, it doesn't come for free. So, you know, like to build a product, you need a team, you need money. So we said, okay, where can we have a start basically, you know, to, to, to get, uh, get some funding. And then we came across those Berlin startup programs. We said, hey, cool, they don't only give funding, they really give like a network, they give like mentoring, which is much more valuable than just money. And then we applied for the Bosch Startup Hub. We were rejected, but what was good because we've been like looking for all these programs. We, we had like a click on all the newsletters. And then in September, just a newsletter came, Vector Berlin program said, I never heard of it before, but you can apply. So we applied basically. And uh, yeah, then uh, we had like this little bit awkward situation that because of the lockdown last year, I was still in Colombia. And my co-founders were here in Germany and we had like to make the pitch somehow. So what we did basically then is I took a photo of me and then they printed up like a statue of me in, in paperboard, like, I don't know, like one, one meter 50. And then they put like an iPad, like to, to my face and then be like pitching. And then I've been like there. And then they had like this kind of, um, uh, how, how's it called? Like speed dating event. So they would take like the pad to everybody and say, look, he's like connected from Colombia. 
And it seems a little bit that that yeah, people still remember what happened to the door. They said, oh, when we when I actually came back there, and they said, oh, you're the the statue. I remember you from from basically. That's, um, Mike, yeah. that that's your mixed reality. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It was our kind of mixed reality. But but I think like the most important point for a successful application there, and I think what people don't realize is like uh, you you need to get connected to the people. So go basically to events where you can meet the people and they see you and you know them. So like if they see your application, it's not just okay another pitch deck, but they actually recognize your photography. Say ah, you remember I remember this team that actually talked to us, and and I think this is pretty important to make like the context before you actually apply for a program yeah um with the thing um events i think it's it's one also one uh, good possibility to get to know or to incubators and accelerators but do you have any other i think constance just froze right constance we lost you Maybe you yeah. should run over and make a knock. No, no, but, but then, <laughs> but then let's just, just answer. I mean, the end of is, I know that Constanze is next to me in a different room, so maybe she has to come here to yeah, ask the question. What was the question, actually? Yeah, the, yeah, the question was basically, I think, uh, how, what other advice we have for, for people to apply to accelerators. And, and the point, I mean, we just talked about two great examples of standing out from the crowd and being remembered. And that's also always something you should aim for. You should be so if if i remember say okay that event and this is mike this is awesome the question is just you on the other hand you do not want to be the obnoxious person who always wants to stand out from the crowd right so 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 it's 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 a really fine line between impressing people with your creativity and pissing people off because you're obnoxious um and and then that fine line you need to walk um and and be be entrepreneurial and take a risk Um, I'm here yeah. again. Okay. Yes, Constantine, we have you back. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> go ahead, Fabian. No, I want to. Yeah, I just want to add. So, um, also adding to this, you really have to think about uh, what what kind of project you are going to pitch and um, how good it actually fits. And one of the point is what you can also transport without kind of standing out is um, that you are really behind your idea. It's not just a random idea that you just can, came up with to um, participate in that specific uh, accelerator program, but it needs to be something that you um, you burn for, kind of, right? So you are, your enthusiasm and uh, so the, that, that you will put your energy in the project and you are actually able to transform the idea to an actual project is also something that's that's kind of very important, uh, similarly to um, uh, trying to stand out, because that, in my opinion, is actually also what what the accelerators are, are kind of looking for, right? They want bets on something where they have the feeling that this is unrealistic, it will never happen, um, or even if it is a little bit of un, uh, unrealistic, if the energy behind the people that are um, applying is high enough, then maybe that's that's enough to to let them through and give them a chance. Yeah, and, and maybe one small point: going the extra mile. I'm always very impressed when I'm in some selection committees for programs, and people actually have checked out my LinkedIn profile. So, so they 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 have prepared. So, so they they know there's somebody on jury or whatever you started competition or something. They really put in the five minutes of energy checking out the, the, the profile of the jury members they to ask specific questions. That's going the extra mile. It's not so, so it's, in the end, we don't have to give a spot in the accelerator program, right? So our life is, Tim, maybe you agree, our life is much easier if we don't have any startups actually that we help because then it's much easier and peaceful. But we would we'd love to work with people who are passionate and who go the extra mile. And, and to show that even in the application process, I, I think that that's kind of key to success. Yeah, uh, not much to add. Um, there are different layers for selecting and scouting when, when we look for um, partners, but the one criteria that we always look in is also the excitement for the use case. So what's the potential and excitement use um, of that specific use case? 
then we always also have in mind what kind of strategic fit would that have towards one of our topics. But I think we have scra already scratched that topic now quite a lot. And uh, uh, then um, there are some more layers of our decision making, uh, such as does it have a business opportunity and potential, but also um, does it fit to any questions that might be in the program that we are running? And the questions per program might be very different. Yeah, from program to program because the goals at the end are always different to do like uh, different in each program cool we are now at the end of our session there's no more question in the chat last chance for all the participants um, to use the stage for your question otherwise i oh <laughs> last question <laughs> Uh, also, for, no, again from 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 John. How essential do Mike and Fabian feel is membership in the co-working space to the development of their startups? Mike, would you like to start? I, okay, I I think especially in the beginning, like when you all maybe only two or three founders, it's very nice because they have like a lot of fresh air. You know, like you're not alone, only cooking your own soup. I think it's kind of a German expression, but like I just will translate like this, but you get like always fresh impressions from, from other people. So it's like very nice. I think when the company gets bigger, it gets also a little bit annoying at some point because I mean, you're like too many people and need some space to do your own stuff and have your own meeting room. So I think like it's, it's kind of nice until you're up to five, maybe like 10 people. And, and then it's maybe something that you think, okay, now it's time actually to have your own office where you can have like, you know, an office where like a lot of offices for startups. So like maybe like in the delivery or something, but then it's really nice to have your kind of place. Yeah, I think it's, um, it also depends on, on the use case that you have. Um, for Hubraum in Berlin, for example, um, there are, there's a variety, not only of, of the people you can connect with, but also a variety of uh, technologies that are available. So if you actually have something uh, where you need access to a specific technology, let's be it 3D printers or maybe access to IoT hardware or maybe 5G test station if you're into networking and trying out something like this, then uh, especially a co-working space like uh, like the Hubraum accelerator space in Berlin is super beneficial when you start and want to try out uh, stuff uh, in in this perspective also office space is essentially very expensive and this this can really help uh, to prevent let's say burn money for an office when you have the chance to also get um, a good co-working space just for a period of time and then of course all what mike said before <laughs> Tobias and Tim, anything to add? No. No? I mean, the, the space is free, Tim. yeah. The, the co-working space is free. doesn't make sense to take any money for that, um, but I, I think that was raised. Uh, maybe if, if we would have had that discussion like five or ten years ago, maybe then it would, it would be about, you know, also gaining something through the co-working space, but that, that changed over time. I don't think that this is anymore the real case. And... Uh, uh, space is more than only space. It's about meeting people and having the right network locally, plus having also for us in the, our Hubraum campus is also specific infra infrastructure pieces available that might not be available otherwise anywhere else. So we opened up, for example, the 5G trial network before 5G was anywhere available around the uh, country. So there were first companies in our location that we flew in here that could stay with us here and then work actually and experience the first uh, 5G connectivity. And there are several of those technology layers that are still coming up and they are still available at our premises. So the premise, the co-working space is more than only having a desk to work at. Nice last words. Okay. Then I would like to, to end the session here now. Um, thank you very much um, for your time. Thank you very much for your engagement and the lively discussion. 
Uh, we have um, almost 30 minutes to go with a startup night and with exciting sessions. Take the time or take the opportunity to join. Uh, no, be part of it and have a nice day. Thank bye bye. You. Thank take you. Care. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.